Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this Sylvania Early Electronically Ballasted Compact Fluorescent Lamp. This one is rated 18 watts and is supposed to put out about the same amount of lumens as a 75 watt incandescent that it is to replace. Now what makes this one interesting is that it's an early electronic version and it's when they started to miniaturize the ballast compartment. As you can see with the picture of the bulb here on the side, it has a relatively small ballast compartment compared to the tube itself. Early Sylvania and Osram CFLs that use the same exact tubes here, like a PL bulb, had quite a large electronic ballast on the bottom. And I have quite a few of those, unfortunately, not one right here to share to compare it with. But this must have been what came after the fact when they started to miniaturize that design. Picked this one up the other week at the thrift store. In fact, it came with two. One's used, and this one's brand new. Now, I do believe I have a video of one of these on the channel already, but I don't think I have one in its box. So, it's definitely worth taking a look at again. On the front of the packaging, the first thing that stands out to me is that we're able to see the bulb inside. You don't see that much anymore, um, or even in some early Sylvania designs like this. It was just all solid. So that's kind of neat that you can see the bulb inside there. Very basic information. Sylvania seemed to like these kind of green boxes at the time. On the back here, we have some areas you can use these lamps in. And more information, naturally. And, of course, how well it compares to a 75 watt incandescent. At least they're telling the truth here. I mean, it is 80 lumens less than a 75 watt incandescent, but at least they're not lying to you. They're at least showing you that, hey, you know, we're, we're coming up a little bit short here, but a lot of companies nowadays, they're just gonna say, oh yeah, uh-huh, it's, it's equivalent to a 100 watt bulb. No, it's not, obviously. I mean, for a great example here, I was just doing a video on this G40 100 watt equivalent here. Now, yes, it is a very big, large envelope, for the bulb, it's gonna lose some lumens, but they have 100 watts here for 1,000 lumens. This one they're saying is a 75 watt equivalent for 100 lumens more. What has happened to being truthful about stuff? I don't know. It'll outlast a whole bunch of incandescent bulbs if you buy the really cheap ones at the dollar store. However, I've bought cheap ones at the dollar store and some of them are still going. On the bottom of the package here, we can see the order code for this particular lamp. And on the top here is its number. Sylvania seemed to put these five-digit numbers on all their different bulbs. So you could uh, easily pick from them. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at this used one here first. Obviously, same design tubes as what would be used in a PL bulb uh, offered from them at the time. And that's the funny part, is that even the base here that it's you know kind of molded into seems to have the PL design in there. It's probably just obviously doesn't have the plug inside. It's just the tube and it's cemented base. The one thing that you can see, though, is that it seems to be hollow in the center. And you can see down in there the ballast compartment. This one's got some bugs and debris and whatnot. And, of course, the, the base here, we have a nice brass base and a sticker at the bottom. Now, this makes me think very much of PL adapters. Uh, that Sylvania had. But let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. So here's our brand new lamp, or allegedly it is. Again, we got our arc tube. It comes up here, loops around. We got our neat weld thing going on here, and then it comes back over. It's a PL bulb in electronic ballast, and this thing is incredibly tiny. Um, again, for an electronic ballast. Here's an incandescent bulb. You get a little bit of an idea the size difference here. Now that's one of the main issues with these early compact fluorescents is that they really didn't fit in a lot of fixtures. A standard A19 could because, well, it sticks out or it's just too long. Here I have for a, a quick little example a 5, 7, and 9 watt PL adapter. And this is for a lower wattage one, so it's slightly smaller. But look at how miniature they made their ballast compartment here. Sure, it is all electronic, so it's very possible, but it's just unique to me how they were able to 
miniaturize it so much so way ahead of its time. Because even spiral CFLs that came out after this still had a very big ballast compartment. Interesting. Maybe some of it's down here in the base too. They really tried to, to cram it together as much as possible. Speaking of the base, let's take a quick look at this one too. I'm not sure. Seems to have the same markings on it. So probably manufacture at the same time. Just one got used and the other one didn't. Enough of my annoying rambling. Let's go ahead and we're going to turn on the used one first because why not? Now watch these uh, electrodes here. That wasn't too much of a show this time. When I turned it on after I got them from the thrift store, it had a nice big blue show there at the bottom because, boy, it has some heavy blackening there at the bottom of the arc tube. We can see the mercury discharge in our little weld there. The camera's not picking it up too good, but it is blue. And this is a full mercury content bulb. So we don't really need to wait long for this to get to full brightness. In fact, I'd say it's already there because we weren't worried about those things at the time. So I'm going to hold this up at our two foot mark here. Let's see, we're getting about 155 lux or so. This particular used bulb at 117.9 volts is giving us 0.26 amps, 17.4 watts, and a power factor of 0.57. So, that is our used bulb. Let's go ahead and try out the brand new one. See if we get any type of difference here. Okay, this one's definitely going to need a little bit to get warmed up. Now, I did not warm this one up previously. But I can just tell by looking at it here that this side is definitely brighter than the opposite side. However, just watching it here is definitely warming up quite quick. No end blackening on this one. It's brand new. We still have our little weld there between the arc tubes. Again, you can see the mercury discharge in there. Very nice. This is most certainly a very instant on bulb. No waiting around here. We're at full brightness, I'd say. It's kind of hard to look at, actually. So, with our brand new bulb held at the exact same spot. Let me see. There we go. Exact same spot. We're getting 235 lux, 0.26 amps, 17.8 watts, and a power factor of 0.57. So, definitely no, you know, uh, phosphor degradation on the brand new one, but there's certainly some phosphor degradation here. And I mean, you can kind of see it, you know, the tubes are a little darker in some spots than others, obviously down by the electrodes, but that's just going to happen with age. The phosphors are going to degrade and it's just not going to put out as many lumens or lux as, uh, originally when it was brand new. With all that being said, Let's go ahead and see how well it plays with our Variac here. And obviously these are not dimmable, but nobody said we can't experiment. So there's our bulb. Let's start dimming it down. We're at 120 volt right now. 110, 100, 90, 80. It's holding up its lumens pretty good. 70, a little bit dimmer, but not terrible. 60, it's still holding up pretty good. I'm surprised for half the voltage. It's starting to have a very light flicker to it. 50 volts, wow. 40 volts, this is really holding up. Obviously it is dimmer, no doubt about that, but it is holding up well. It hasn't lost its arc yet. Wow, 30 volts. It's nice and dim, though. Let's see here. I don't know if you can tell, but whenever you dim a CFL like this and it actually holds up during its dimming, the color temperature of it shifts greatly. So, let's see if we can capture that. Speaking of it, since we're at such a low voltage right now, now this is 30 volts. 
according to our, our variac here. So I'm going to hold up our bulb to our meter, and let's get a reading there. And then we're going to bring it, well, let's see how far down we can go. Oh, okay, we hit 20 volts and we're out. I'm going to bring it back up here. Oh, it finally ignited about 65, I'd say. Let's bring it back up to 120. Ooh, it's not liking that at all. We're at 120 and, oh, okay. It made a really weird noise. <laughs> it kind of scared me, honestly. Um, but anyway, we're back up to full brightness now. And uh, taking into consideration what we saw here, we'll take a closer look at it uh, in, a, in a second. But let's get a, a better look. Oh, I'm, I am bumping things. Unless our bulb is just done now. Oh, let's see here. I don't think it liked that too much. Mmm, smelly. Yeah, something in there didn't like that at all, actually. Too bad I didn't hurry up and get the reading. Oh my gosh, I'm so upset. Okay, well, I mean, we have this one here. Yep, that's on. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to open that up. Maybe it's a fuse or something, and it went a little above 120, and that was the end of it. Let's turn off our lights. Oh, well, anyway, we're shifting gears. And let's get a reading here with it not dimmed. Obviously, this one has the phosphor degradation, so we're not going to get the best results as if we still had our brand new one here. Anyway, uh, there's our readings. The spectrum of the new bulb dimmed. The spectrum of the used bulb at full brightness. The CRI of the new bulb dimmed. The CRI of the used bulb at full brightness. The white balance of the new bulb dimmed. And the white balance of the used bulb at full brightness. I am curious as to what exactly happened here. Because it just went out. It's not like it, you know, it's not even making any noise really. I am incredibly curious. Uh, let's see if we can open this. Okay, this video just keeps getting more interesting, doesn't it? Well, I went around the edge and kind of scored it a little bit so I could start, well, hopefully opening it. And it looks like we're getting there. So let's see what is inside here. Well, I guess we're going to need some more screwdriver action. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Hey, look at that. Okay. Well, it's pretty tight in here, isn't it? You can see, I'm trying to think about how to do this. But this most certainly has an actual PL bulb in it. Because if you look incredibly closely here, it still has the printing on it. Do you see that? Up in there, blue, Sylvania, GTE, 15 with the underline, made in USA. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Okay, sure enough, just what I suspected. It's a PL bulb, just in there. I wonder if there's anything on the other side. No, I don't see anything on the other sides. Literally, they just shoved one in there and glued it in. I don't really see anything blown here. Yeah, I don't see anything charred or, or, you know, out of place wrong. So I was able to test some components in here and what I think is the fuse and different things like that. This little resistor thing that goes up to the neutral. It all tests fine. So it must have been a bigger component or capacitor or diode or something that's just like, yep, I'm done. Anyway, uh, we'll investigate that further some other day, but I suppose that's what we get with our Sylvania bulbs. Wasn't that just a bit more exciting than, uh, well, we signed up for when we started the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to give it a like down below and leave a comment. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more great videos like this one. Also check out my secondary channel, Mercovay 
and subscribe over there for more behind the scenes and alternative content. Of course, check out the other videos here on this screen. And as always, thank you very much for watching.